The Evolving Leader is a series that shares insights into the never-ending journey of leadership and entrepreneurship. Join us as Three Pillars CEO David DeWolf talks with peers who have been instrumental in his own leadership journey. Welcome back to The Evolving Leader. We're pleased to have Mark Tim joining us for this episode. We'll be talking with Mark about finding great mentorship and why it's especially important as you go from working on yourself to learning how to lead others. Mark is a serial entrepreneur and exponential thinking practitioner who has started more than a dozen companies. He's also the co-author of the book Mentor to Millions, along with Kevin Harrington, one of the original sharks of Shark Tank and one of his greatest mentors. Mark spent two and a half years with Zig Ziglar Digital Media, where he hosted the Ziglar Show podcast. So we have really high expectations for him here today, Mark. Mark, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. No problem setting the bar high. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, let's do this. So I, I want to start just by asking the obvious question. How did you end up having Kevin Harrington become your, your mentor? Yeah, it's a great question. And I get it a lot because one of the things that, uh, that people ask is, how do you get a mentor? How do you get a mentor like Kevin Harrington? Well, I have to say it starts with when the student is ready, the mentor will appear. And I was really in a place in life where I was ready to up my game, ready to take that to the next level. And I wasn't afraid to go for it. And my kids were crazy fans of Shark Tank. <laughs> and I'm literally sitting there and I'm talking to my kids about mentorship because that's a favorite topic of mine. And my daughter looks at me and says, that's who should be your mentor. And I'm like, you, you, no, that's not going to be my mentor. There's no way that I can have him as a mentor. And so he's on TV. He's famous. But then hit me. You already know everybody you need to know to accomplish everything you need to accomplish in life. And so the question is, are you bold enough, courageous enough to raise your hand and let other people know? And I was bold enough to let my original mentor was Zig Ziglar when I was 19 years old. He was my mentor and he's passed from this earth seven years ago, but I became friends with his son, Tom Ziglar. And so Tom and I became friends. I put it out there to Tom that I was looking for a mentor. And lo and behold, Kevin Harrington had reached out to Zig Ziglar and Tom Ziglar as well because Zig was a mentor of Kevin's and he wanted to extend Zig's legacy. So he reached out to Tom Ziegler and said, hey, I want to help extend your father's legacy so that my children and my grandchildren will know Zig Ziegler. I had reached out and done the same thing with the son of my original mentor. Well, guess what? Tom Ziegler is actually who connected Kevin Harrington and Mark Tim. And so it started with my daughter pointing at a TV screen. I had no idea how I was going to reach the guy. I had no idea I was going to connect him. I didn't dial up the phone and say, you know, the directory for Kevin Harrington. But my original mentor and the son of my original mentor is actually who connected Kevin Harrington and I. And we became instant friends because we had that camaraderie and that synergy of having Zig Ziglar as both of our early mentors. Mark, you know what I love about that story? And it's so you is... By the time you're having this conversation, you are already an incredibly accomplished entrepreneur and leader. And here you are, talk about an evolving leader. You are a leader that has the humility to know that this is a journey and to always wanna get better and to always want that next mentor and that next mentor to learn and to grow. Um, wh what a fascinating story about how late in your career, quite frankly, um, you were seeking a new mentor. Yeah, no question about it. In fact, I believe that we should have mentors in our life all the way till we're not in this life anymore. Uh, I wrote the book with Kevin. You guys mentioned it earlier, Mentor to Millions. And that's not millions of dollars. Mentor to Millions is millions of people impacted. The quickest way to take your purpose, your plan, your passion in life to millions is through mentorship. You know, we were joking before we started this on air about Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett had mentors. Bill Gates had mentors. The greatest sports legends, Michael Jordan, had mentors. And so the fact is, is that if you have been put on this earth to impact people, 
you need mentors to help you regardless of where you're at. You're right, David. People think mentors are for when you're early in your career, but I'm at a stage in life where I'm relying on mentors more than ever. David, you may not even know this, but my current mentor today is Bob Goff. Mm -hmm. Bob Goff is a, a very accomplished author, speaker. And so when Kevin and I's mentorship relationship took the next level, and by the way, one of the greatest things any mentor can do is graduate a mentee, yeah. is for a mentee to get to the point where they don't need that mentor anymore. Well, as soon as I was done with my mentor relationship with Kevin Harrington, I started looking for my next mentor. I personally believe I will have mentors in my life for the rest of my life. But guess what, David? After Bob Goff, I've already talked to my wife. I'm looking for a younger mentor mm. because all I need is somebody that has wisdom that I don't have. That's who I need as a mentor. It has nothing to do with age. It's about attaining wisdom. And I think that we need to be lifelong learners, regardless of the stage we're at or the success label that people put on us. We need to be learning for our entire life, and we need to have mentors during that journey. Yeah. I, I love how you talk about mentors as seasons, right? And it's there is a time and a place. There's things that you learn from mentors, but then you've also leveraged mentors to get to new mentors. Um, and you talked about how when the mentor, the mentee is ready, the mentor will appear. It sounds like you're pretty darn intentional about seeking mentorship. And I, I think that's something you and I have both shared. And in fact, part of the story of how you and I met is through a mentor. So <laughs> the bottom line is, is that that's what happens. That's why mentorship is exponential. And, and the first thing, again, I literally, because of this book, I've had thousands of people ask me, how do I get a Kevin Harrington mentor? How do I get, you know, this mentor, that mentor? But the fact is, David, it starts with looking yourself in the mirror and saying, am I ready? Mm. Am I ready to grow? Am I ready to stretch? Am I ready to learn? And the fact is, when you're ready, then it just takes courage and confidence to raise your hand and say, I'm ready for a mentor. And likely that mentor is going to appear, maybe not in your current ecosystem, but somebody's going to know somebody that that mentor is going to help you. In fact, in our case of Michael Hyatt, you actually knew Michael. So you had a relationship with Michael. Michael Hyatt was a mutual mentor of David and I. That's how we met. And so Michael was mentoring me via me following him on his platforms, reading his blog, following what he was producing, reading his book. So I had yet to meet Michael. You actually had met Michael and was already beginning your mentorship relationship. And yet both of us were seeking out that next level of mentorship. And we joined a group. We became you know, part of Michael's formal mentorship program and we met each other. And that's the beauty of mentorship is that you don't necessarily have to know the person. You just have to be intentional about it. And then the, the, your intentions lead you to the learning and the growing and the mentorship that you get. And I'm going to say something here on air. And that is, I can without a doubt say that I learned a lot from Michael Hyatt. He is an amazing man. But I also was mentored by the other men that were in that group. And I learned just as much from you, David DeWolf, as I did Michael Hyatt. And that's exponential mentorship. I, I got involved because I wanted Michael Hyatt as a mentor. And as a result, I ended up getting as much from one of Michael's mentees. And that's why we're talking today. Yeah, I, I, it's funny. I was thinking the exact same thing as you were telling that story was the exponential mentorship there was I think we both got that same thing. It's one of the reasons for years and years after that, you and I have stayed in touch and we still get together, right? The, the number of times you'll fly here to visit me or I'll fly with you and, and oftentimes with an, another member of that forum and it's all because iron sharpens iron and uh, we not only had this common mentor, we had this common thirst for continuing to get better and I think we've recognized the different strengths and weaknesses that we each have that complement each other and that we can learn from each other, right? Yeah, without a doubt. And I want to just take this opportunity to say that mentorship is different than coaching. Oftentimes in coaching, you're paying the coach. In this particular case, you know, there, it, there's nothing wrong with a financial transaction in some form of mentorship, but that often leads to the real mentorship, which is the relationship that we have, David. Um, there's no financial transaction. There's no business being transacted between the you and I. We're just committed to helping each other because we're aligned in our goals. And so there are seats 
seasons where you're mentoring me and there's been some seasons where I've been mentoring you. Totally. And that is why coaching and mentorship really differs greatly. And I've had this conversation this weekend because I've met people that have 30 plus years of having coaches in their life, but they've never had a mentor. And so there is a difference in that kind of relationship and you can have the same coach. This gentleman had the same coach for 30 years, but in my life, mentors are in seasons mm -hmm. and the best, like I said, the best thing that can happen is for you to graduate from that mentor. And sometimes that mentor will help you find the next mentor, which is again, that exponential, exponential um, impact of mentorship. You, you and I are both intentional about finding mentors. Mentorship. What is it you look for? How do you know um, that Kevin or Bob or Michael are the right one? It's not just yeah. a daughter looking at a TV screen and saying that one. There's something deeper there. Go into that. There is something deeper there. And I have to tell you, if it had not been for Zig Ziglar, I'm just going to be really candid here. I would have never reached out to Kevin Harrington. Yeah. And so the fact is, is that the, the, the fact that he had Zig as a mentor put him in a category of mentorship for me. Mm -hmm. because he was on Shark Tank, did not put him in that category of mentorship for me. Right. It was the fact that Zig was an early mentor of his that said, this is the kind of guy that could really help me grow because the, when, you're, when you're looking for a mentor, David, it's the trust equation. At the end of the day, you want to find a mentor that you respect. You want to find a mentor that has wisdom that you don't have. But unless you develop trust that mentorship relationship is going to be no more than a lunch, a breakfast, or a dinner, and that's it. And you'll get some nuggets from them. But once you have that trust, once you have the vulnerability, because real great mentors, let me, let me put it to you this way, great mentors let you fail. Great right. mentors let you fall. Great mentors hold you accountable. And that's, that's what you're looking for in a mentor is someone who is aligned with where you're going in life and says, I can help you get there, but I'm not going to do everything for you. I'm certainly not going to keep you from falling because we, we learn more in 10 minutes of agony than we do in 10 years of bliss. Right. And so we want a mentor that's going to be there to help us learn when we fall, learn when we fail, hold us accountable when we make commitments. That's what I'm looking for in a mentor is somebody that will do those things, not somebody that's accomplished great things or is famous on TV. Okay, they're fun to talk to. You might learn something in one engagement. They are not a mentor. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's a little bit ironic, uh, that point that it's not necessarily somebody famous or you've heard of. Uh, it's somebody that truly cares, right? That's what you're saying. Um, and I think sometimes for leaders who do begin to develop a profile, um, we can become intimidating to other folks because the mentors we're talking about are people that people may have heard of before. People have heard of Zig Ziglar. Many people have heard of Kevin Harrington or Michael Hyatt, right? What would you say to the individual, maybe the entrepreneur, both of us are entrepreneurs, Mark. We both started businesses. We both remember the first time. And yep. there's a big component of you, you don't feel like you do belong, right? You're figuring this out for the first time. You know nothing about a business. What do you say to that entrepreneur? They're just starting their journey of leadership. Where do they go look for that mentor? Yeah, uh, I said it earlier and it's worth repeating. Uh, Bob Odeen wrote the book, Power of Who. And the principle is you already know everybody you need to know to accomplish everything you've been put on this earth to accomplish. The question is not about who, it's about courage, confidence, and clarity as to what you want to accomplish. And then your vulnerability and that courage to raise your hand and say, I'm ready. And you put that out first. I had someone challenge me right in the middle of promoting the book, Mentor to Millions, okay. challenge me and say, I just can't find a mentor. And I said, well, are you on social media? And they're like, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook. And I said, okay, here's what you do. I want you to go on LinkedIn and Facebook. And I want you to say, my passion in this world, and then list your passion and then say, I'm looking for somebody willing to help me accomplish that passion to mm. teach me. And I am teachable. That's it. It was like 20 words, go place that and see what happens. They went, they put that on LinkedIn and Facebook and literally had a dozen people. And this was not a big following. This person didn't have a big following. A dozen people show up and say, I'm in. That's a vision and purpose I'm aligned with. I'm willing to come alongside you. Here's what I want to tell you. David, the world is separated between the haves and have nots. 
The haves have mentors, the have nots don't. Hmm. And the fact is, is that there are more mentors ready to mentor than there are mentees with the courage to ask. Hmm. And that those are powerful. You got to sit on what I just said for a little while, because there are more people out there like you and me. There are more people out there that have something to give than there are people with the courage to ask. And so that's what it takes. And I want to circle back to one more thing, David, and that is that when you do get a mentor, at whatever level, it could be somebody right in your ecosystem. It could be somebody in your community. It doesn't have to be some of the people that we're talking about here or David or I. Here is the key to truly getting everything you can out of mentorship. And that is one thing, be the best student. Hmm. Be the best student of your mentor. If you double down, and, and David, you've seen this in your life. You saw it with Michael. If you become the best student of your mentor, guess what? That busy person that has no time for anything will have time for you. That busy person that you scrambled to just get 30 minutes with in the beginning is asking you for 30 minutes because they want to know what you've accomplished. There's nothing more satisfying than passing your hard-earned failure on to someone else to grow from so they don't have to fail like you and then see what they're doing with it. And so the key is, be the best student. And if you're the best student of theirs, you'll be with them through that season and they will be proud to pass you on to somebody that they know that can help you in the next season of your life. Totally. There's two really big nuggets there that like really resonate with me, Mark. One is passion and purpose. You talked about starting that ask with what am I trying to accomplish? What am I passionate about? What is my purpose? And I think that often resonates with people. It's, it's about starting with the why. And then number two, being the best student. Uh, I'm often asked, right? One of the things we talked about in an earlier episode was one of my accidental unconsciously competent moves early on in business was establishing a board of directors before we had any business having a board. And that was so incredibly successful for me because I was able to attract individuals that really were mentors. I had multiple members. The, my first board, all three of them were mentors to me and true mentors that really cared. And it's exactly what you just said. Not only did they believe in the purpose and the passion, they also really, really wanted to pass on to the next generation of leadership what they had learned and I respected and honored that time. And we had Bobby on earlier in one of the earlier episodes. He talked about that, how I'd come prepared and I was ready and I just drink from the fire hose. And I can tell you now being on the other side and sometimes being asked, there is a wild difference between those that are ready and show up. You just wanna help them, right? When they are that hungry to learn and they take it seriously, those that are just wasting your time and just want to have a conversation with, with somebody they look up to or respect, it's a little bit more difficult to make the time. And, and I think those two things you said, so powerful for people looking for mentors. Yeah, without a doubt. And, and if you're listening to this and you're saying to yourself, I need mentors in my life, I want mentors in my life, uh, I'm going to take a second. I'm going to walk you through the journey. Okay, so you're the mentee. And here's what it looks like uh, to my to my right over here. You can't see it. There's a brick wall. And so just I want you to picture a brick wall. The job of the mentor, David, is to give the mentee the bricks. Okay, so if you've chosen the right mentor, then they've got bricks of, of knowledge, of wisdom, of learning, and they're, they're forged. The reason I give the picture of bricks is because they're hard. They, they've, they've been forged through failure. They've been forged through, through lots of miles and, and hard work and effort. And so it's a brick. It's solid. And so they're passing that on to the mentee. Now, the mentee's job is to recognize the brick and pick it up and collect it and, and add it to their life. However, there's a big difference. You see a lot of mentees, David, will they're brick, brick collectors. Hmm. They collect lots of bricks and they even stack them up in pretty configurations and even maybe make a wall out of them. But David, your youngest child can push over a wall of bricks. Hmm. There's nothing about them that makes that wall foundational to build upon. It's the concrete mortar that's inside of and in between the bricks that lock in that wisdom and that knowledge. And that concrete mortar can only be achieved in one way. And that is you have to then as the mentee, take what you've learned from your mentor and teach it to someone else. Hmm. That is the mortar. So it's one thing to get the brick and recognize that. 
then you have to take that brick. You must teach that knowledge to someone else. And by the way, you can teach your family. It doesn't have to be another person exactly like you. You can take that wisdom and teach your children, teach your family, teach your coworkers, teach your boss, teach your employee. But once you teach that knowledge, it becomes the mortar that locks it in. Now, here's the beautiful part. You collect that wisdom, you teach other people, that's the circle, you lock it in, and now you've built a foundation that you can build a business on, you can build a family on, you can build a life on, you can build a passion and a purpose on, because it's solid, it's not going anywhere, it's foundational, and it's ready for you to add the next level of bricks. Mm -hmm. That, that's powerful. It takes action to collect these words of wisdom and to put them into action and to make them your own, right? I think that's another thing about mentorship is a mentor versus a coach. A coach isn't just telling you what to do and how to do it, right? A true mentor is giving you this wisdom and allowing you to apply it and to make those mistakes you talked about. So powerful. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes coaches, one of the jobs of coaches is to keep you from failing. Mm. And, and that's, that's a big difference between a coach and a mentor. You, sometimes you'll hire a coach to say, don't let me fail in this negotiation. Don't let me fail in hiring these employees. These are good coaches and worth the money. But the number one reason you're hiring them is so you don't fail. And I'm sitting here telling you a great mentor lets you fail, like lets you <laughs> fall. I mean, you know, he's not going to let, let the, he's not going to let the failure be fatal, but he's going to let you fall because that's where the good stuff happens. That's where you pick yourself up, dust yourself off and sit down and say, what did we learn from that? How are we going to grow from that? How are we going to be better as a result of that? That's the kind of mentors that you want in your life, not right. someone that's going to keep you from failing. For sure. So, David, let me let me jump in and ask. We've talked about a few of Mark's you know, legendary mentors. Who have been the most influential mentors in your career? Yeah. You know, so we, we talked about one of them. Michael Hyatt was definitely formative in my uh, career and in, in my own life. Um, one of the passions that Mark and I share, and I think one of the reasons that we were attracted to Michael and his leadership and his mentorship was because Michael really cares about not only thriving in business, but also thriving uh, as a husband and a father. And he wanted to pass on to the next generation, how do you do both at the same time? And he was instrumental, I think, in both of our lives in helping to shape that and making sure that as we grew as leaders and matured into the next phase of our growth, we were able to keep that, I don't even call it balance, I call it integration. And so that's one. Um, Bobby Christian has been on the, the podcast and uh, was definitely a mentor of mine for a period. We've talked about that. Uh, Ed Johnson is another one, serial entrepreneur. Um, we mentioned him in one of the stories we brought up about not riding two horses uh, in an earlier episode. Um, he had built and sold about five different businesses as an uh, entrepreneur and really invested in me really at the onset of his, uh, or at the end of his career as he was really winding down. Um, and I was so grateful uh, for that. Early, early on, John Fowler uh, was a CTO that I worked for and taught me everything I know about technology. I've just had so many, I've been so fortunate that people that really cared about me and not only, I think this is a difference between a coach and a mentor also, is didn't just care about my professional development, every single one of these people cared about me as a human being and as a person and invested in me. Um, and that was a really important aspect um, for me, for the mentors, was that they understood who I was as a person and what I was trying to accomplish um, as not only a professional, but a human being. And they allowed me to live that and really helped to balance that out. Yeah, can I can I jump in here because David, I, I love that, and I want to I want to circle back not just to that point, but also to the Michael Hyatt point, and that is that uh, I'm just if you're listening right now, I want you to know that the most important people you'll ever mentor in your life are your family. Uh, you absolutely have an opportunity to take everything you've learned from it, from this podcast, from anywhere in life and apply it at home to the people that matter most. And I know that resonates with David. We got that from Michael Hyatt. We started living it out in our lives with our family. And I'm here to tell you, and, and David's got some young adult children as well. All of my six children are young adults. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I am the most proud of today and the thing that, that I look forward to the most is that when my young adult children now, when they reach a hurdle, when they have a hiccup, when they are challenged with something, when they're making a big decision, I'm the first phone call they make, hmm. the very first phone call, because I have unapologetically 
committed to my kids to mentor them. You see, if you get it right when they're in your home, if you get it right when they're there, if you've invested deeply enough, if you drill deep enough wells, then they will choose you to lead them to be young adults, to lead them to be college students, to lead them to be girlfriends or boyfriends or husbands or wives or colleagues or friends. And that is where I wanted to be in life. And I'm living that out right now. And there's nothing I get more joy over than mentoring. Now, it doesn't mean I don't have to have some tough meetings. I mean, I had a really tough conversation with one of my kids just this morning, but because of the relationship that we have, and he knows I'm in it for his passion and he can trust me, we were able to have that conversation. I can't wait to see what happens as a result of that. And it was from a position of something he had failed at, Mm -hmm. but I didn't shame him. I didn't blame him. I simply helped him learn from that and then put the pieces in, in place and have the journey to not do that again and actually grow from it. So I really believe the most valuable business that you will ever own, ever operate, ever even get the chance to be a part of is not the one you're going to, it's the one you're coming home to. And if you believe that as well, then make sure they're getting your first and your best and not your their, your last and your least. And certainly make sure that you're taking everything you've learned in life and you're teaching them and mentoring them so that, that you get to be in their life for the rest of their life. Mark, that's so well said. And I would say another aspect as you're talking about that, I'm sitting thinking here about my mentors and my kids. Um, my, my oldest son, Joe, is now 18 and he's out working and starting his career. And, uh, you know, I was just chuckling to myself. I hadn't realized it until right now, but he has started to connect with my mentors. Um, Bobby Christian, or on earlier in this podcast, um, has helped him with some coaching around starting his career. And, and Joe wanted, he asked if he could go to him um, and really respected and looked up to this person who he sees as, wow, that was somebody dad learned a lot from, right? I thought that was so cool. He has brought your name up, Mark, multiple times. I remember when he told me he connected with you on LinkedIn. Uh, You know, just so much, um, I I think, great mentors. That goes back to caring about the person. Here are these uh, individuals have been phenomenal in my own life that now my kids are embracing, and they're embracing my kids, and uh, it's just fun to watch. I, uh, I have a term for everything we're talking about here. Well, first off, everybody knows the saying that things are caught more than they're taught. Hmm. And what that means is, is that he was paying attention to you. You may have been teaching him for 18 years, but really what he's getting and what he's applying now was caught more than it was taught. He paid attention. He watched you. He met some of these people and he saw the impact they were having on you and he caught that. But I want to say that I also believe that the concept of what I call, David, contagious proximity. Hmm. And what that means is, is that if you want your kids to be impacted by your passion, your purpose, and the people that are pouring into your life, they have to be within the contagious proximity ring. Hmm. which means they have to be with you. They have to travel with you. They have to be at meetings with you. They have to come to work with you. They got to get on an Uber with you and stay at a hotel with you and be on a plane with you because that's the ring of contagious proximity. That's where you get to breathe into their life and they get to see the people that are breathing life into you. And that's what you did with Joe. And that's why you're seeing the fruits of that contagious proximity today. He was catching things more than he was even being taught. And now he is turning around and he's turning that contagious proximity into his own life. And he's tapping people that meant a lot to you. So if you want someone to be impacted, that's important to you, think about that ring of contagious proximity and make sure they're inside of it and it will happen. So powerful. Absolutely. Well, as uh, my kids are a little bit younger than, than yours, David and Mark, but uh, as the father of a four-year-old and two-year-old, I can guarantee you they are picking up on everything that you say and do. My two-year-old imitates everything that our four-year-old does, <laughs> who in turn says things that I didn't know I said until I started hearing them say it and wondering, where did that come from? <laughs> and then I realized, oh, that's that's, that's coming from fault. me. Um, uh, and, and so one, one other thing I want to touch on, we're running low on time, but I, I know both of you, and David, you alluded to it, have been um, key proponents of living what you talk about as the integrated life. Um, you were doing it before it was thrust upon all of us, uh, <laughs> as it has been over the course of the last few years. And, and, you know, Mark, I think your, your points about the ring of proximity are, are, you know, are, are have never been more relevant than they are today. Well, I, I can tell you that, uh, there's a little bit of jealousy in my eye right now because I wish I knew what I know now when my kids were four and six and two. 
I, I think I got it figured out just in time, or at least my adult children are telling me I got it figured out just in time. <laughs> But I'm telling you, I got it wrong for a lot longer than I got it right. And I want to be honest with anyone listening out there. I'm not the guy that got it right all the way along. I'm fortunate that my young adult children are getting things more right than I did at even their age. But it was because I got it wrong and I figured it out. And then I doubled down because I knew time was of the essence. And here's what I did. You see, the two worlds for me were orbiting in different directions. I was crushing it in work and getting crushed at home. I was walking through the door with lacking confidence and clarity, yet I came from a world where I could make 100 decisions in one day with complete confidence and clarity. And so they just didn't communicate. They didn't match up. And so the day became, when the day became that my family became my most valuable business, I just started doing everything I was good at at work and I started doing it at home. I couldn't function in work without staff meetings and without accountability meetings. And I just started having shareholder meetings. I, I mean, guys, I legally incorporated my family. You can go to Indiana and see 2B Tim's LLC. I really went all in making sure my family was my number one business. But we started having shareholder meetings on Sunday nights. We started really anything I learned from David, I would bring home. We would do uh, different, uh, I remember doing strength finders with Michael Hyatt. I came home and had all my kids do strength finders. I did disc with Zig Ziglar and I ended up having my kids all do the disc personality profile. The point is, if you're good at anything in life, you can be that good or better at home. The question is, are you willing to apply that? Are you willing to bring it home? I would go to masterminds and take three pages of notes for me and four pages of notes for how I was going to apply this with my family. So if you're out there and you are one of those people that's high performing, doing well in work, but you're not seeing those same results at home, I just want to challenge you to make that home, make your family your most valuable business and just take everything you're good at and just start doing it at home and you'll see results beyond anything you could imagine. Yeah. And Mark, I'll just add one little thing to that, which is you talked about it before, this, this idea of proximity, simply exposing one to the other is amazing. Some of my best memories, some, some of my best moments as a CEO, but also some of the most amazing moments as a father have been when I took a kid on a business trip, when I brought... Um, a group of kids into the office before a baseball carpool that I ran, right? The, the little moments, I say all the time, when I'm tucking my kids in at bed, I'm still a CEO. When I'm in the boardroom, I am still a father. And you better believe in either one of those moments, if I get a phone call, I am going to act in terms of what is the highest priority, what needs to happen right now. It's not about having them compete against each other. And I think you can really live what you talked about when we start to break down those walls and live as integrated people all together. I brought, uh, David, I brought Marcus to a board meeting. Yeah, that's basically what I do now. I sit on boards of companies, companies that go have gone public, companies are going public. I brought Marcus, my oldest, to the board meeting, okay? So it's the board, I'm on the board, and I asked permission, can he come and sit in? And by the time it was over, he was contributing to the board. <laughs> and so obviously not voting, but he was contributing. And every one of them, one by one, asked me, how did you get that relationship? How could we have done that? And I said, I'm gonna tell you something, it didn't happen on the plane ride here. It happened because of a period in my life where I said, I'm no longer going to go to anything. And they called me out on it, David. I don't know if you remember this part of my story, but once we became a business, a family business, the family was like, hey, you're traveling all over the place. How come we're not going? I do. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> well. And so for, for the next three years after that, I didn't take a single business trip without one of my kids traveling with me. They were always one of them, at least sometimes more with me. It was because of those travels, because of that contagious proximity that they have become the young adults. So people ask me, what's the one thing you need to do if you want a young adult that's crushing it, that's full of purpose and passion, start putting them in that contagious proximity ring, start having them travel with you. You'll be surprised. You'll say, well, they can't come to me with that. I guarantee you they can. There was not a single thing I did from Kevin Harrington's kitchen to board meetings that my children weren't allowed to come to. And it's made a tremendous difference in their lives. But the relationship we built doing that is now forged forever. Very nice. Well, Mark, thanks so much for joining us. We set the bar high for you at the beginning of the episode. 
Uh, I'll date myself here, but I think you, you did the Fosbury flop uh, right on over it, and, uh, and, and you were great. So thanks so much for joining us to talk about the importance of mentorship and how evolving leaders can find mentors in their lives, uh, and, uh, and we can't thank you enough. Thanks, Mark. It was thanks a lot of fun. Thanks, David. All right, guys. Thanks again for tuning in to this episode of The Evolving Leader. If you liked what you heard, please give us a five-star rating, a glowing review, and a share on whichever social media networks you call home. For more on the podcast and to view video of each episode, please visit daviddewolf.com slash podcast.